Here I'm going to demonstrate a, a camera that's been uh, mounted on a, a pan and tilt uh, servo or PTZ. Um, the camera I'm using is just a Blackmagic Micro Studio camera where I've got um, full CCU control coming mm -hmm. back in and um, the PTZ is a, um, a Besco MP101 I think it's called uh, it's just one of these um, it just uses the normal mounts uh, I've got uh, connectors on the back here for um, controlling um, let's see if I can get in here for controlling the um, pan and tilt plus it also has some surveillance things for um, automatically sweeping um, as you can see there you can do um, different sweeps anyhow that's you know, there's plenty of videos on YouTube about this particular head um, but I've um, I've got it connected um, to the uh, um, the seven pin din connector that's on the on the um, the head and it's coming out through uh, one of my cables and on this cable here um, I've got a, a, a cable that comes out from the main control to um, the camera's uh, stuck that away there to the camera's link connector that's the the link and um, it's given me the ability to not only control the pan and tilt of the BESCO but I'm also controlling the zoom iris and focus of this particular lens now that's not always uh, available depending on the lens you use I'm just using a um, Panasonic Lumix lens which is one of the recommended lenses uh, for the micro studio camera but um, over way over here you'll see I've got a similar setup with a um, micro studio camera this has actually got a Canon lens but I've got videos up there about all that but just um, heading on back to the um, this particular camera here um, this um, is currently running through an ATEM um, and there's the picture up there from it that's the output of the camera and um, now the magic is all done at the other end of this cable here so this is just a short cable that um, I've just got an uh, extension now this is an RS um, 485 or RS422 depending on what you want to do with it and I've just got it going down a cable here and it's just coming plugging into the box and this is the um, controller that's the Besco controller and it can take um, this is the output to the um, pan tilt head and the camera's link um, now that can be that can be a cable up to probably 10 meters I guess well it's in fact being RS485 it can go 1.4 kilometers but this particular setup here um, sorry no the, this the other cable connector here is for the um, um, for the controller which I'll talk about in a moment it can it can run 9.2 kilometers from this box here now this cable here can only run about 10 meters um, and it controls as I said the camera's length as well as the pan and tilt um, head um, on the um, the business end of the box there's a an optional um, cable that goes out to a joystick which gives you just pan and tilt um, control lo localized um, and then you can either power it through um, a connector down in here um, or you can power it via USB the USB is also used for um, up uploading you know, software firmware updates and it is also used for doing some controls and I'll just show you up here um, the different controls uh, are just done through the normal uh, USB terminal and I can actually just go into uh, configuration mode here and on the configuration mode here you can use the key computer keyboard to go through the different settings uh, I won't talk too much about that no, that's pretty that's pretty well discussed in the user guide once the user guide gets out 
Now the, um, the actual uh, method uh, or utilization, this is what I call direct mode. And basically you have the PTZ controller, which is just this. Um, you then have the actual uh, PTZ, and you notice I've got in brackets the IF, that stands for iris and focus, so it's not just pan, tilt and zoom, it's iris and focus as well. Now that's this box here, so that, that's um, the box that I'm um, demonstrating here today. Um, you also see there's the optional joystick, which um, I showed you here, and, um, and then this is the camera rig, that's the short cable that I showed you. And then that's the camera mounted on the pan and tilt. So the camera's got your zoom focus iris and your PTZ's head's got pan and tilt. So that's basically the um, uh, using this set setup in direct mode. That's the, um, the best core um, that you can buy. This is from B&H. And you can see over there, it's, um, it's a pretty good price. Um, but you've got to remember these heads aren't like a cameraman. I mean, sure they can pan and tilt, um, but they don't—they <laughs> don't give you, uh, you know, the smoothness of a great fluid head, and and, and a good cameraman, um, because good cameramen will give you, a, you know, a slow start and you know, and then you pan or you tilt and then the slow finish and all that. Now, these things are run by motors, and even though you can you can use the joystick to um, yeah, just slow starts and stops um, and all that. It's, it's still not as good as a cameraman. So, if you're dreaming of using a pan and tool head in, to replace a cameraman, sure they're good for framing, but they're not good for on-air moves. And, uh, yeah, and I've I've used yeah you know, twelve thousand dollar Sony BRC three hundreds, and they're no better than these. Yeah, and this this setup here, yeah, you, yeah, you're talking about a yeah less than two thousand dollar 4k camera and a you know, hundred and twenty dollar um, pan and you know, pan, ptz so just add to that the cost of your controller and speaking of which um that's the controller i'm using although uh, you can get this in different varieties um uh, but there, there it is there yeah 30 32 dollars yeah, that's that's nice and cheap, and these controllers can control up to oh, 199, I think. I oh, know 128, 128 separate cameras. You can you can program uh, using the camera button here on the controller. Um, let's get my focus. So there's the camera button, and um, and you just type in the camera number. If this thing will focus for me, maybe I'm a bit too close. Um, and uh, and on the screen up here, you know, it'll it'll come up and you know, give you um, information about it. So you can set right now. I've got it set to camera one. I can actually say you know, make it camera twelve. Well, you go, make it camera one twelve. Um, but I just want to make it camera one. You can make camera one. There it is, camera one. Um, you can also turn the beeping off on this as well, um, which you just type in. Uh, I think it's. Uh, 999 box and now that's that stops beeping so you can push buttons and it stops beeping um, I'm just going to turn that back on again so you know I'm pushing buttons there you go so it's just the beep is back on again um, anyhow so you'll find plenty of information about these devices here as I said they're, they're um, really low price you can connect um, this um, to the um, uh, PTZ interface box uh, up to 1.2 kilometers using RS485. So it's just to connect on the back for the RS485. I'll just show you on the photo here. So there's your um, connection on the back. So 1.2 kilometers away. So um, and then if you you can use the one controller to do 128 cameras. Is all you do is you just Y cord out to all all the um, um, all these um, interfaces, and um, so anyhow, I'm just going to give you just a little quick overview uh, of what everything does here. Um, this uh, um, joystick control here, this is optional. You can buy this; as a, you don't need this. Um, 
it's mainly used for just when you're setting up the camera uh, out in the field uh, away from the main controller you can just quickly check to make sure that everything's all in the range because you don't know where your left and your right ends are going to be so you can do all that and set all that up but you can also do that using the knob here um, and this particular knob here has uh, a whole lot of functions let me just show you down in here and um, the, 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 there's an LED on there and it, depending on the colour you can see down here this is the main control and depending on the colour it tells you what that knob will do um, down the bottom here you'll see in the magenta mode the setup and setup it will give you the ability to be able to uh, do different settings this will might change as I add things uh, and then you'll see on the in the protocol um, these are some of the protocols that um, I'm catering for now um, none means is it won't accept any commands at all through the RS422 connector now uh, that RS422 connector is this, the, the rear one let me come up a bit higher this is the rear one back here um, so that's your RS422 it's also 485 so when you're in when you're in deck mode which is the first protocol what that does is it lets you use uh, a shuttle and a jog for, as a deck controller to do the panning and tilting only and I won't demonstrate that now but if you have a look on an ATEM you'll see up here you've got a hyper deck control and when you go to hyper deck control if there's a deck connected you can use the shuttle and jog mode to do pan and tilt um, now that, that will require either a camera that has the PTZ control which is just happens to be uh, possible with a Blackmagic Micro Studio camera um, and um, also if you use uh, a new box that I've got coming out soon which I will show you here uh, here this is another flowchart now this is this is using the same PTZ uh, interface that I'm that I'm showing here but it has this other little box up here now this side here this side here is is at at the control room so there's your ATM and plugged into the ATM's network the Ethernet you'll have all the other stuff but you'll also have this little PTZ to ATM controller which I'll talk about in a different video and then plug into that is the same um, controller here now that's that um, that controller can control up to in this instance 20 cameras because the ATEM will only give you the possibility of 20 cameras even though it can control up to 128 um, and then from the ATM the return video feed or the return feed to the cameras or the cameras can be either coax or fiber which is all part of the ATM system and then that um, again here's your camera and your, your PTZ this can be a BESCO and it could be any kind of a PTZ um, and there's the same interface and you'll notice that the camera outputs the RS422 link which I showed you up in here and that can, that will plug directly that's um, that's compatible plug will plug directly into the side of the, the unit as the controller has and uh, and then you set the protocol um, accordingly so as with the protocols so that's the deck um, Visca protocol is the protocol that you would uh, use if you're not using DEC and again in, in this instance this would be using a Visca protocol um, and then you've got Pelco D and Pelco P I'm currently running this system in Pelco P um, but I could, you can switch it over and um, change all that there are a few other um, protocols that I'm going to be installing in here uh, I um, I just haven't um, gone into the details of them yet, but the way the software is written on this unit here, it's able to um, uh, I'm able to add protocols as and when necessary. Now, th this particular box I'm using here is just a prototype. You probably saw in some of the earlier pictures on my Facebook page. Um, the the wiring is all wire wrap wired, but the actual um, the finished modules which are just at the um at the shop now getting getting made um 
there is another connector that's not on the prototype so you'll see there's your, your two um, connectors as I said this one here goes out to the PTZ head and camera this one here takes the incoming RS422 or 485 but there's a connector in the middle uh, and if you have a look at that this is the actual um, the circuit board so there's the RS422 connector so this is just the circuit board and there's the connector you see there's the um, the PTZ control but in the middle there's uh, another now this this is for expansion it's going to be it can be used for a lot of different things <coughs> which I won't go into at the moment I'll go into, into writing but I, I won't talk about it here for the moment but it does include the ability to be able to read back um, position data from the pan and tilt head the Besco this particular one here Besco I mean it doesn't uh, give you any information back about where its position is and subsequently you can't do um, you can't do presets because you need to know where the head is to be able to go to a position um, but uh, as other PTZs come available that have that um, that will connect through this uh, connector because it's got that connector's got sensors and stuff like that. Also gives me the ability to put displays and uh, a myriad of other things, bits and pieces. But it's only this there for future expansion. Anyhow, let's just get to the meat of things. The um, the actual unit itself uh, has has a control knob on the front, um, and you won't see it at the moment because the LED's turned off. And there's a shift button back here to give us alternate functions. Um, there's also a button on the optional joystick which gives you the ability to um, control just the pan so if you push the button down you can move the joystick left and right without uh, interfering with the tilt um, but just I'll just give you a quick example of this so there's our um, there's our camera there now I'm just going to pan to the right um, and um, I um, I'm not in that mode at the moment. The um, oh, let's go there. Oh, sorry, I forgot that I was in setup mode. So we're just going to come out of setup mode here and um, it's done. See, now I'm doing the pans left and right, so I'm just doing a pan left and pan right, um, tilt up, tilt down. The um, let me just come back here so you can see what I'm doing. So just moving, just moving the joystick left and right and up and down. You can kind of see what's going on there. Um, so, th so the actual optional joystick just gives you pan and tilt only. Um, you can um, you can see that's um, that's actual. I'm just just if you don't push the joystick too far, it just it'll do a slow, and then it'll speed up as you get to the end. Um, now the um, shift button on the controller is. Um, oh, uh, can toggle between different speeds so now I'm in a slower speed and um, you'll um, you'll understand well there you go um, now when you're using the um, the Pelco sorry the um, the external controller being this one here um, you can as I you probably can't come back that far but anyhow this is you'll hear the beep so that's me doing the the pan and and tilt um, using the joystick. You can also this particular controller has got the optional Z axis, so I can do a um, um, a zoom in and a zoom out. Oh, there you go. I was zoomed in. There's the zoom out. And that's just using the the twist this way. So you got tilt that way, tilt up and down, and pan left and right, and then you got zoom in, zoom out. So that's me doing a zoom in. 
So let's just zoom in on the clock up here. And um, there, there it is there. Um, now with the um, with the actual controller, you also have these extra buttons as I can get a focus here. You have these buttons up here, tell you why. Now that's that's hitting the button and doing a zoom. Um, you got near and far, which does your focus, and you got close and open, which does your iris. So if I just go, I'm just going to hit the wide button. It's going to hold my finger down on the wide button here now. And you'll see it's just while my finger's held down, it's continually doing the zoom until it gets to the end. I'm just going to go um, telephoto, which is zoomed in. And there's our zoom in. Uh, make sure this camera's focused. There it is. So um, I can now hit close and you see the iris is closing. Now this is this is great for using uh, getting exposures right for multi-camera uh, multi-camera jobs, uh, and then there's focus. So I can actually hold my finger down, and you see it's going out of focus, and then coming back into focus. So you can you can get a really accurate focus on it as well. So just getting a bit, and as I said, you can turn that beeper on and off just using the. Um, the built-in command for the controller so so that's basically the main controls of this unit here um, I uh, let's get this thing to focus um, these particular buttons here don't do anything for the moment what menu does if you push menu you will toggle between two different speeds so uh, it's in the slower speed now if I just push the button once and I do a pan now you'll see it's going to take off really fast so if you need to get yeah, a reposition a lot faster than um, uh, in normal mode. You'll um, you can do it that way. There it is. There moving there, um, and back there. So I'm just going to finish off now, just talking about um, some of the functions on the. I'm just going to hit the menu button again, just to get back to slow speed. And um, so with the actual knob, uh, I mentioned that you have these. Um, the different functions. So as all the knob does, is depending on the colour of the LED, will tell you what the knob is going to do. So you can see red is pan. So if I just push the button here once, you'll see now the red... Focus please. There, you'll see the red LEDs come on. And then I can then um, pan. And here I'm just turning the LED now. Oh, there you go. Turning the LED. You can see here, sorry, turning the knob. You see it's panning left and right. I'm going to push the button again, and you now you'll see it's green, which is going to be tilt. And again, these, these adjustments are on the box so that when you're just setting up, initially setting up the camera, um, so you don't have to walk all the way back to the truck or whatever to um, adjust the um, adjust the controller. So we hit the button again. We're going to go to blue mode, and the blue mode here uh, is zoom. So if I just do this, you can see now zooming out, and um, you can you can actually some only one-handed, you can actually push the button here. I think that will actually give you a faster zoom in, a faster zoom out, um, and just zoom all the way back in again. The um, the next mode on the box is yellow mode. Yellow is the exposure. So we come up here and I can then crank the exposure down and crank it up. And I mean that, that in itself is a great feature to be able to control the exposure for multi-camera work. Uh, we hit the button again and we're in cyan mode. Now this does the focus and um, it might get a bit better look at it if I pull and move the camera up. So that's me just fo defocusing. And uh, the poor old phone's trying to fight that focus, and that's me focusing it back up again. And I can go through focus and come out the other side. So I just move it back and get the focus back in again. And um, the last mode is um, setup mode, and um, that will um, uh, that will take you um, into the ability to be able to set the protocol set the camera number 
uh, and adjust the lead brightnesses. Uh, I've got the lead brightness wound all right down at the moment, but um, so that's magenta. Uh, and then of course if you uh, move, turn the knob one more turn, or sorry, hit the button, you will um, um, uh, you will then uh, have the ability to be able to disable this knob so, you, so somebody can't come and make an adjustment out of it all. Um, that's that's just the brief introduction to this to this unit. These things will be available uh, for sale on my website at. Um, let me go and find that here. Um, I know it's here somewhere. Um, I can't find it. Um, oh, here it is here. So there I am. Um, but uh, you just go to here, scroll down, and you'll see that it it will be in here somewhere as a, a PTZ uh, interface, uh, not to be confused with um, the new product coming out soon, uh, which is called the PTZ to ATM. So um, stay in touch, keep in touch with the, the, the Facebook page and um, you'll get a more update. But as I said, these, these things are probably going to be available first week of April. Um, see you then.